All right, in this video, what we're gonna do is go over all of the tools in our select menu, which means we'll be talking about all the different ways we can select objects, points, polygons, in Cinema 4D, and I guarantee you there's gonna be some tools that will help improve your workflow. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna start simple like I usually do, though as you can see, we will be getting into some other complex objects to uh, help go over some of our other selection tools here. So really what we're gonna be doing is going through our select menu. And like I said, I've gone over some of these before um, in my beginner's guide talking about the user interface and basic you know, object creation and selection. Um, and so for some of these, it makes sense to be in our different point mode, edge mode, polygon mode. Um, but really these tools, the ones that are active here that you can select will work on just objects themselves. So the brush tool really just allows you to just kind of brush over holding down the left mouse button. And its main property is the size. Uh, and you can change that either here or by using your mouse wheel um, clicking it in and moving it left and right, okay? I guess up and down works as well, though. I guess sculpting um, makes that a little bit strange, but we're not here to talk about that. Rectangle selection, um, if you've ever worked in Photoshop or Illustrator or an Adobe program, then you should be familiar with that one. Pretty straightforward. Um, in point mode, in edge mode, polygon mode, you do have tolerance selection, which changes whether or not um, you can select something uh, just by touching it or it have to be has to be fully inside. So for instance, with tolerance selection unchecked, um, if I just try and select this polygon, it's not gonna select anything because it's not completely inside, okay? Um, but if I want it to, to select any polygon or edge or point or whatever it touches, then I can just turn tolerance selection on. So that alone can be very um, helpful along with visible only. So if the polygon is facing us, if the normal is facing um, towards us. Um, we also have lasso selection. All right. And once again, um, it's these tools really that work um, not only in point uh, edge polygon mode, but also on objects. Okay. So you have lasso. All right. We have polygon selection, which allows you to click and drag out a polygonal lasso. Um, and those are kind of the, the main ones and ones I've probably talked about before. So um, what I want to do though is dive in to say our polygon mode and talk about some of our others like loop selection. And, and you can see some of these have shortcut keys like UL. So, you know, you can always hit U and then L to pull up this one, but this is a really nice way of selecting a whole loop. And just like with other selection tools, if you want to add to a selection, you can hold shift. If you want to subtract from a selection, you can hold control, okay? So it can allow you to create some pretty interesting selections here um, very quickly and very easily. And that's the idea with all of this is that we're making our selections as quickly as possible and not wasting a lot of time doing it. So there is loop selection and ring selection is gonna look similar, similar in polygon mode. Um, so let's see what loop selection first looks like in um, edge mode, which actually makes a little bit more sense, right? Because you can see it's a whole loop where the edges are connected uh, versus ring selection where it's in a ring. So it's not the ones that are selected. But um, once again, shift to add control to subtract there. Okay. Uh, we then have outline selection. And this one's a bit strange. So I'm going to go back to the um, plane here for this one and go to my brush tool and polygon. So let's say you've made a selection of polygons. All right, you can then switch to outline selection. And by clicking on it, it's going to convert that selection to edges. So um, that can be really easy to do, or an easy way of making a, an outline selection. You can see it also works kind of on the outside as well, if that's what you want. So outline selection can be very helpful. Um, Similar to that would be, oops, let me go back to polygon, make this a little bit smaller, would be fill selection. So we can now fill the inside of a selection. And the reason it got rid of it is because I did not hold shift. If you hold shift, it will add that filled selection to your original outline. Um, so that can be very helpful. That way you don't have to select every single polygon inside. So that's really nice. Um, we then have path selection, which 
really would work best or be best on a complicated object, something with a lot of polygons, like a character face or whatever. Um, but we can still make it work here. Uh, this is really nice if you just want to select kind of um, using edges and just kind of drag across them to help select them. So it's really nice for selecting seams if you were going to UVW unwrap something. Maybe if you were going to split something in a unique way, um, this will allow you to do it. And I'm just holding shift to add and you can go horizontal and then let go, click and drag to go up while I'm holding down the mouse button to do this a little bit. So um, yeah, you can kind of see that we can make some really fast, easy selections there. And that would also um, uh, be useful if you wanted to convert a selection and you can convert selections by holding down control. Um, sometimes it doesn't work as we saw here. Uh, might have been with, uh, by, might have been the fact that I was in past selection, but usually uh, that does uh, work. So um, that can convert one selection to another though. I have had better luck going from polygons to say edges uh, as opposed to vice versa. So for instance, if I have polygons selected, hold control and then switch to edges, you can see it selected those. And then if I, really want to, I can just deselect uh, the outside one. So a little extra tidbit there for you. Uh, next up, we have Fong Break Selection. And I ended up behind here. So um, we can take a look at that with this tire. I, I did just grab it from um, the asset browser here. But with the Fong Break Selection, it's based on the breaks in our Fong shading. And just to kind of show you a simplified version before we go into the tire, um, if you've never made Fong breaks before, what you can do is um, pull up your loop selection. And I actually pull it up hitting V on the keyboard to get to this kind of weird menu that I'm not sure exactly what to call it, but there is the select menu here, and then I can just find everything um, I want. So it's kind of one shortcut key uh, uh, to remember versus all of these. So let's say I have loop selection here. I can select both of those. I can right click and choose break fong shading. And what that's gonna do is rather than have Cinema 40 try and smooth shade across those edges, it's gonna break it. And so when I do fong break selection now, notice how it's only selecting those areas because they have um, different fong angles. All right, and I've broken the fong shading there. So that's a simplified version of what we're gonna be doing. And it also works on complex objects as a really easy way um, to uh, select a lot of polygons very quickly. So if I go into polygon selection mode here, I'm still in Fong Break selection. Notice how I can select the front very easily. I can select the whole side. I can hold shift. So um, depending on how the Fong angles are set up, uh, it can make it very easy to select, you know, parts of a complex mesh much easier than before. And honestly, that's what all of our selection tools are for, just giving us different ways of selecting um, different parts of our mesh quickly and easily. But you can see without too much work, I'm able to you know, select um, a lot of just kind of the rim part while not really doing too much of the inner, uh, the rim part. Um, doing more of kind of the, I guess the wheel? I don't know what to call it, but uh, hopefully you get, get what I'm saying here. So that can be really helpful. Um, I also wanted to touch on the symmetrize, symmetrize, sim, sim, uh, sim, uh, symmetry eyes, the selection. So if you do have a selection and you want to copy it over to the other side of your object, you can just hit symmetrize selection and it will do it for you. If you want a few more settings, you can go to the settings here and choose whether it's adding it, whether it's um, subtracting it, okay? So in that case, didn't do much, um, or flipping it, okay? So just kind of moving that over. Now, this works because this is a symmetrical object, right? It's a plane um, and it's mirroring over the X axis in this case. So uh, it's, it maybe isn't quite as powerful as we like, though we do have other symmetry tools up here as well um, that I've touched on, so in a different video. Um, but that can be helpful. Uh, we obviously have select all, deselect all, and also a really powerful one that I don't think people use a whole lot is invert, okay? So if it's really easy to uh, select what you don't want, all you have to do is hit invert to get, you know, select the opposite, um, and then you can delete it, split, whatever the case may be. But I use invert probably, um, it's probably close to the top of the list here, ignoring say brush selection. It's up there with say loop, um, 
what other one? I use Grow and Shrink, which I'll get to here very quickly, but that can be really handy as well. Um, grow and Shrink selection is pretty straightforward. If you select a polygon and you want to grow out from it, if uh, you can click on that and it grows by selecting all the polygons that are touching the ones you currently have selected. You can then shrink that um, as well. Okay, so that can be really um, helpful. A little bit more concrete or I guess coconut based thing would be if I want to select, say, the inside here, ignoring the fact that I have the selection tags for these materials selected, um, I could very easily maybe just select part of the middle and then just hit UY and start growing this. Um, since grow, the shortcut key is UY. That is one of the few I do remember. And you can see I've pretty much, you know, got everything if I need to even this out by, by adding using shift. And now I've selected all of the inside. Really what I would do though, is probably say use um, my loop selection, maybe try, try and find something towards the middle and then start growing it out, right? So I didn't quite get it, but you know what I could do? Come here to fill selection and do that. And that's really where you wanna get with these selection tools is kind of know how each of them work, know their strengths, when to use them, and that will help you um, select something a whole lot quicker and a whole lot easier, okay? So that is our um, grow. Um, like I said, you also have shrink selection as well. Um, don't use this nearly as much, but um, it does the opposite, okay? Um, I don't really wanna get into the hide selected, although I guess I can. It's not gonna be too difficult, but you can hide selected polygons, so it will hide what you have. Um, it, you can um, hide unselected. You can show all. These you have to be a bit careful with because you really don't get any kind of indication here that polygons have been hidden. And that can be really, really tricky if you forget um, that you have polygons um, hidden. So I wish there was a way it would tell you that you do have polygons selected on this object so you don't accidentally forget. Sometimes it's pretty obvious, right? Like this is pretty, pretty obvious, okay? But um, that's not always uh, the case. Um, and yeah, uh, that uh, can be very helpful. Now I did skip one, forgot about the pine cone here and select connected. I use this one quite a bit as well for complex objects where um, you know it's made up of multiple pieces that have been connected and deleted. And so if I don't wanna have to select all of these polygons for one of these little things, um, select connected will do it for me because this is just its own separate little piece that is not connected to anything else. It's not one continuous object. It's multiple little objects, perhaps even a cloner what, what, that uh, was you know, connected and deleted and then made editable, uh, or I probably said that in the wrong order, made editable and then connected and deleted to combine all these into a single object. And so um, this allows me to select a continuous piece like this. And I don't know if I want to you know, rotate it a little bit, scale it, maybe even delete it to make some of these look a little bit different than each other. Um, select connected definitely allows me to do that. Uh, now, I think I will end with talking about store selection. I've already kind of touched on convert selection, um, and I'm not really going to get into vertex maps, weights. I do use those in a lot of other videos, though. Um, and we're going to come back here to our coconut to talk about this. So there's already selection tags here. Um, I don't want to necessarily delete them, uh, though I guess I could. Um, so let's say uh, I wanted to apply the inside of the coconut here, just like I did previously. Uh, I may want to select the inside here. I can select that loop. I can then do fill selection, hold down shift, and that has completed my selection for the inside here. And if I choose store selection, what it's gonna do is save out that selection as a polygon selection tag. And this could be a polygon, it could be edge, could be point, it really depends what you're using it for. Um, if I was gonna do, use fields with something, then I'm probably gonna use points. If I'm gonna use materials, which is what I'm saving out this selection tag for, then um, you know, ultimately I'm probably better off saving it out. And I do recommend naming these. So let's just say inside, all right? Call it, um, the other thing was kind of weird. Uh, so we have this now and we can open up our material manager, find the inside, 
And what you might have done pre previously is drag the material directly onto your selection, and that will work. The problem is it will make or can make a different selection tag. Now, it didn't in my case because I had that same tag selected. Okay, so um, if I just oops, select this, drag this on here, um, oh, good, they made it smarter so that it doesn't create a new selection tag. But my uh, method of doing this still, at least what I'm in the habit of, although now it looks like you can just drag this on here once you have saved out my the selection, is dragging it onto the coconut and then dragging the selection we created previously into the selection field of our material tag. Um, and that is how we can utilize the store selection, at least with materials and, and creating them. Um, but they can be used for a variety of other, uh, or a variety of other things. That will do it for this video. If I forgot a selection tool, please leave a comment below letting me know. And also, if there's anything else you would like to see in a video, please leave a comment. And until next time, take care.